In Movies and Money, film critic Eric Childress is joining us now. Hello to you, Eric. Hi, Angie. Despite some not so great reviews, Sony's Morbius had the third best opening of the year, but how does that measure up to other action adventure films? It's not particularly great in context to so many of the comic book films we seem to get every few months now. Obviously, it is not a film in the Spider-Man or Batman camps, but the $39 million it made was not even half of what the Venom films made for Sony, and this is a character that is supposed to fit into that part of the studio's comic book universe. Now, I thought more people would ignore the terrible reviews the film has been receiving. The studio was still lowballing its estimates last week for only a $33 million opening, and hoping that maybe something around $50 million would earn more hyperbolic headlines about the film overperforming. But perhaps there were still enough moviegoers out there trusting that when even film critics they see getting tired of reviewing these kind of films drop a film to as low as 16% on Rotten Tomatoes, that maybe there is something to this one lacking qualities. On the other hand, while Morbius is not breaking any records for the studio, even Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider opened higher back before there was even an Iron Man in theaters, the film still only cost a modest $75 million, which by superhero standards is a drop in the bucket. Two big films are being released this week exclusively in theaters. Let's start with Sonic the Hedgehog 2. What do you think? Sure, Angie, and this is an interesting story given that Sonic the Hedgehog was on its way to becoming one of the most successful films ever made from a video game, but it happened to be one of the last films released right before the pandemic began in March of 2020. So now the families have started to get back into the groove again, Remember that Sing 2, which opened in December, had grossed over $160 million. Paramount is hoping that they will have an IP sequel that will excite kids to join in on the hijinks again, even as their parents are wishing they were in some other theater. The first film opened to a robust $58 million, the sixth best opening ever in the month of February. Now, a $50 million opening this weekend would put the sequel in the top 10 of openings for April. Now, Paramount has had a pretty decent year so far, with Scream, Jackass Forever, and recently The Lost City becoming one of the few original films to break out with audiences. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is poised to be their biggest hit of the year so far, with Top Gun Maverick waiting in the wings next month. Not-so-critical favorite Michael Bay returns to theaters this weekend with a new action film, Ambulance. Here's an early look. Officers down in front of the bank. Automatic weapons being fired. Easy, 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 easy. You want to drive or can I drive? Eric, what's your review of Ambulance? Well, it is definitely a Michael Bay film. And it is true that many film critics are not particularly high on his brand of filmmaking. 66% is the highest score he has received with the Rotten Tomatoes Collective for The Rock back in 1996, which happens to be the one film on his resume that I like as well. Ambulance does not make two. It stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as estranged brothers who team up on the spot for a bank robbery Gyllenhaal has set up that would help his brother with the money for an operation for his wife that the government is not providing for this veteran. Okay, so that's your human element. The rest of the film is a nonstop chase in a stolen ambulance when the robbery goes awry that is almost impressive in just the sheer amount of mayhem. But one of the many problems is that when you're dealing with so much chaos, you need a director in control of it to make it smooth and entertaining, and not one who is a literal agent of chaos. The film is unrelenting in the worst way, with characters screaming at one another, the calm ones being super annoying instead of being comic relief, and Gyllenhaal at the center trying to be a wacky sociopath that further imbalances the already shaky ground and camera that Bay creates. And no amount of acrobatic drone shots will put this in the league of the action films we want to watch more than once. Ambulance is the kind of thing one endures rather than enjoys. And while Bay, I think, has made much worse, moviegoers can do so much better. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.